Coleman. Starring Chuck Connors. Anybody else but you, I'd put him in jail and keep him there till I got some sense back in their head. Now, you tell me he didn't mean that. Oh, I meant it all right. And there ain't nothing you can do about it, Marshal. I'm gonna kill him. How? Oh, pull out a gun and shoot him? No. He's gonna suffer like me. Suffer like my son did. When he felt them bullets are tearing through him. Mrs. Carruthers, your husband was shot down while he was committing a crime. Now, you can't blame anybody for that except Sam. I blame the man who shot him, Marshal. <laughs> Take it easy, Mrs. Carruthers. Take it easy. You tell him. Seven days after I'm gone. You tell Lucas McCain, he's, he's gonna die. Mrs. Crothers, Mrs. Crothers, Mrs. Crothers. She said, I'd die seven days after she did, huh? That's right. Seven days after I'm gone, you tell Lucas McCain he's gonna die. Because I killed her husband. That's about it. That's ridiculous, Mike. I was deputized. You deputized me, we were upholding the law. I know. I know only too well, Lucas. I told her that. Well, what did she say? It didn't make any difference. Her grievance was with the man whose gun cut down Sam Carruthers. And that man was you, Lucas. Why, she must have been plumb out of her head. She's gone. How can she do anything? Well, I don't know, Mark. Mike, you don't really believe anything's gonna happen, huh, do you? I don't know what to believe. Sarah Carruthers was a determined woman. She had no respect for the law. When a woman like that makes a dying threat, I wouldn't treat her too lightly, Lucas. Micah? Hello, Mark. Lucas, could I talk to you? Sure, what is it, Ben? Well, I'd like you, as head of the council, to call a special meeting at the town hall tonight. Special meeting? Why? Well, despite the type of woman she was, it was necessary that Sarah Carruthers have legal advice from time to time, and I gave her that advice. Well, fine. What are you driving at? Well, she made out a last will and testament shortly after her husband was killed. Well, go on, Ben. Lucas, Sarah Carruthers' entire will concerns you. Concerns me, huh? In what way? Not at liberty to say, I mean not here. The will specifically states that it's to be read to all the people of North Fork. Micah said she threatened me or something before her death. Got something to do with that? Lucas, I can't say anything until the will's read. All right, Ben. I'll call the meeting. Can I go too, Paul? Look, son, what concerns me concerns you. Now, Mike, I'm gonna need some help rounding up folks if we're gonna have that meeting Ben wants. Why, oh, sure thing. Down. Well, I know you're all wondering what this meeting is about and why I'm conducting it instead of Lucas McCain, head of our town council. So we'll get right to it and not waste any time. I guess everybody here can speak for those who couldn't make it, your wives, children, and so forth. What have my kids got to do with this? Well, you'll find out, Eli. Now, this is the last will and testament of Sarah Carruthers. I drew it up for her, and I can assure you that it's absolutely legal. I'm supposed to read it to you. What it says, I... Well, I guess it speaks for itself. Quit gabbing, Ben. Read the thing. All right. I, Sarah Carruthers, being of sound mind and memory, do hereby give, devise, and bequeath all the worldly goods and monies of which I die possessed to the residents of the town of North Fork, territory of New Mexico, 
to be divided equally among every man, woman, and child resident therein at the time of my demise. Was? What money? She didn't have nothing. What is this, Ben? Some sort of a joke? Well, last will and testament is hardly a joke. But she didn't have any money. She owed me $17 for things she got from the store. Yeah, the way I heard tell it, she couldn't even pay her bill for living at the hotel. Let John talk. The, uh, the Carruthers, both Sam and the Mrs., kept a strong box in my bank. Now, it was none of my concern as long as they paid the rental for the space. By that, I mean I never interfere with the private affairs of the bank's customers. Well, when uh, Sam was killed, Mrs. Carruthers told me the box was never to be opened until after she died. So this morning, I opened it. What was in it, John? One hundred thousand dollars. Quiet now. Quiet now. Wait a minute. John, where would a woman like Sarah Carruthers get that kind of money? I don't know, Micah. As I told you a moment ago, I never interfere with the private affairs of the bank's customers. John, you mind telling us uh, when they started keeping that strong box in the bank? Well, it was several years ago, Lucas. I could look it up. I've always suspected that Sam Carruthers and his gang were mixed up in that shipment from the Denver Mint that was never recovered. What are you saying, Marshal? I'm just putting two and two together. That Denver Mint shipment was just one of many. There were plenty of others he was suspected of. And I guess now we know they weren't just empty suspicions. Oh, wait a minute, Marshal. You got no proof this money's the same as was taken in the Denver Mint shipment or any other robbery. No, I can't prove it yet, but I've got a list of serial numbers going back quite a few years. That strong box is impounded as of now. Calm down. This one. Tell them the rest. Well, even, even if you do have a legal claim to the money, there's one more provision in the will. I haven't finished reading it yet. It's to be divided equally among every man, woman, and... We heard that. My demise... Oh, yeah. On the proviso that Lucas McCain that Lucas McCain shall not survive said demise by a period of more than seven days. Are you saying that Lucas has to... has to die? So that these people can get that money if they have a legal claim to it? Those are the terms of the will. Oh, no. I've never heard of such a thing. It's preposterous. Look, folks. I think Millie's right. Now, Sarah Carruthers was a pretty sick woman when she died, in more ways than one. Mikey can tell you that. I appreciate how all you feel, but uh, you might be making a little too much out of this. Well, I move this meeting be adjourned, and all this nonsense to be forgotten right here and now. I agree. The whole idea don't make sense. Lucas here is a fine man, a good friend. I don't want no part of that blood money. <laughs> I guess the meeting's over, Ben. You can throw that thing in the wastebasket. I'd be pleased. However, I do have to file it. <laughs> Who knows? Luke might get struck by lightning before the week's out. Well, now, Ben, if that happens, at least I'll know it's not Sarah Carruthers' doings. What about that envelope, Ben? Oh, yes. She also entrusted this envelope to me. It, all it says on the front is, not to be opened until after the death of Lucas McCain. Well, what are you going to do with it? Well, I'll have to hold it for at least seven days. Legally, I'm bound to anyway. Well, I'll meet you at the bank in the morning, Micah. Bring that list of serial numbers with you. Good night, Millie. Lucas. Must be nice knowing you have so many friends, Lucas. Oh, it sure it is, Millie. Uh, Mark, I've got a new box of licorice sticks that just came into the store. Here's the key to the back door. Now, you go help yourself, hmm? Oh, thank you. I'll be right back, Paul. All right, sir. I wanted to talk to you without my hearing. Well, uh, what about? You two. You've lived in this town about as long as anyone. You've seen them come and go, all kinds. Oh, go on. Well, the short time that I've lived here, I've discovered that most of the people of North Fork are, are good people. But... Well, quit fitting around the bush, Millie. Well, I, what I'm trying to say is, Suppose you can't prove that that money locked up in the bank is from the holdups. 
Suppose it was legally hers. Well? Well, then don't you think you should take some precautions of some sort? Well, like you said, Millie, they are my friends. Yeah, we better go. Just like I found it when I opened it. This is going to take a little time. We'll wait. All right. Series A. Bill number 266655. Six, five. What's that again, Number 266655. Six, too lightly. What's the matter? Nothing, Mark. I ought to lock you up. At least you'd be safe in jail. No safer than I'll be at the ranch, Micah. Now, look, I know these people. If I can't trust them, I can't trust anybody. What about Mark? Well, Millie, Mark's my responsibility. We'll see you later. <laughs> right. It belongs to the people of North Fork. If any of you want to claim it under the terms of the will, of course, if you do, you'll never get a chance to spend it, unless you want to hang first. For killing Lucas McCain. <laughs> You wouldn't go into town today. I have to. I've got to let Millie know how much feed we want to order for next month. That uh, couldn't wait till the end of the week. What about the end of the week? Well, you know. Well, the time will be up then. Oh. Mark, you remember reading in your school books about the ostrich, the way he hides his head in the sand thinking he's safe, and all the rest of them is sticking up like he's waving a flag? Yep. Well, I don't want to be like that ostrich. I'll be as safe in town as anywhere else. North Fork's our home. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah, but suppose that... Suppose there is someone who'd rather count the cash in their pocket than have me around? Well, don't you think I ought to know about such a person? I'll see you after school, Paul. All right, son. Uh, is your spread? That's right. Oh, Belden, Stacy Belden. Luke McCain. Pleased to know you. Oh, sure, it's a hot day. Say, how far have I got to go to get to North Fork? About three miles. I'm uh, heading that way myself. Well, if you give me a chance to water my animal, yeah, I'll, I'll keep you company. Right. Boy, this sure is pretty country around here. Yeah. What brings you to it? Well, I got the job of work offered to me. North Fork? I reckon. You know, I got some kin in that town. Haven't seen them since I was knee high. Seems like they're his cousins on my mother's side. Maybe I know them. Yeah, it's possible. Eli, Eli Benson. Eli. You know him? 
Yes, I know, Eli. Most everybody does. Got the biggest family in North Fork. You don't say. <laughs> Last Saturday, Eli, he was, he was celebrating his firstborn. Well, he's celebrated ten more times since then. Ten? I mean, eleven kids? Oh, for goodness sakes, if that ain't so. So you're gonna work for Eli, huh? I say that, you know, I don't recall saying that. Well, if you're gonna ride in with me, let's go. Nice little town. We like it. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Not uh, now, thanks. All right, I'll see you around. You, uh, you are gonna be around, aren't you? For a while. I just wanted to be sure. Thanks, McKay. Belden. Oh, strange company you're keeping. Now well, he stopped by the ranch. I was coming in anyway, so I rode in with him. Says he's got some work to do here. What kind of work, I wonder? There's only one kind he does I know of, Micah. Maybe I'd better go have a talk with him. Better talk to Eli Benson first. He's related to him. That's so? I wonder how come Eli never said. Would you? No. Eli's up in Millie's store. I just saw him a while ago. He is, huh? Hey, what are you doing in town, anyway? Any reason I shouldn't be here? No. As a matter of fact, things have been pretty quiet. Well, I hope they stay that way. Hey, I hope that thing isn't loaded. Oh, hello, Marshal. Lucas? Shucks, no, I was just trying it out. I need me something smaller, Miss Millie. I'm just going after a coyote. Well, I'll see what else I've got. You've looked at just about everything. He's been killing my chickens. Something wrong? You related to Stacy Belden? Who said? Belden did, Eli. He's over at the saloon. Why, that no good murder. What's he doing here, Marshal? Apparently, he's got some work to do. You know me. Both of you. I'm a quiet man. I got a good family, good friends. I came down here from Kansas a long time ago, settled down, made something of myself. I got respect. That's something I didn't have in Kansas. I didn't have it because nobody related to Stacy Belden had it. What's he doing here, Marshal? Can you tell me? He thought you might know. No. I got nothing to do with that man. Well, he's here for a purpose. Somebody sent for him. But who? What purpose? Think on it a minute, Eli. Figured he's here to kill you? Oh, no. No, he wouldn't be. I mean, maybe he's just passing through? No, Eli, he said he had some work here. But I... It stands the reason, Eli. Nobody in North Fork would try for Lucas for a lot of reasons. But a professional killer, that's something else. You know, the will said all I had to do was die. It didn't say how or by whose hand. Now, if somebody hired Belden to do the job, that'd make it nice and easy. Especially if he had 13 shares of money to get. Oh. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. You've got to believe me. Eli! Is that you, Cousin Eli? Yeah, Stacy, it's me. How are you, Stacy? It's been a long time. Yeah, it has been a long time, and I'm fine. Just fine, Eli. Eleven kids. Why don't you come on over here and have a drink with me? I already invited Mr. McCain. How about it, McCain? Uh, no, Stacy. Thank you just the same. Not now, if you don't mind. Well, what's the matter? Can McCain answer for himself? I'll be over, Belden. Fine. Fine, I'll be waiting. Don't make it too long, though. You gotta believe me. It wasn't me. 
I didn't send for him. I didn't even know where he was. How could I know? It's been 10 years. Please, Lucas, I wouldn't do a thing like that to you. Why not, Eli? You got a wife and 11 kids. With Lucas out of the way, you'd stand to make a pile of money more than anybody else. No, I told you. I don't want no part of that blood money. Even if Lucas, even if... Wait a minute. How would I know when the old lady was gonna die? I mean, I didn't know what was in that will. Nobody did till it was read. Eli, the will was read four days ago. You could have sent for him. I swear I haven't seen or heard of Stacy Belden in 10 years. All right, Eli. Michael, why don't we go over and see Ben? He might know if there was anybody else who might have had a chance yeah, to see that. Ben, the lawyer. Let's go talk to him, Michael. Hey, McCain! McCain, I'm waiting. What's the matter? Don't you want to have a drink with me? I told you I'd be over later. Now wait! Right now. Come on, have a drink. Later. I said now. McCain, you riled me. Well, that's too bad, Belden. Now, let me tell you something. I drink with whom I please, when I please, where I please. No two-bit gunfighters coming in here and telling me what to do. You understand that? Now, why don't you stop beating around the bush? You got business with me? Let's get on with it. Well, I say I had business with you? You don't have to say. I got you figured cold. You calling me out, and all I ask you is to have a drink. If I have to call you to make you admit somebody hired you to gun me down, then I'm calling you. See that, Marshal? He's calling me. Who is it? Don't you know? Oh, how should I know? Good Lord, he tried to kill you, Lucas. What is it? You know that envelope? The one that wasn't supposed to be opened till after Lucas... Uh, yeah. What is it, Micah? This is a letter to Stacy Belden from Sarah Crothers, telling them to pick up an envelope containing $5,000, care of Box 15, Santa Fe Post Office, only if he killed you within seven days after her death. If you open that envelope you got, you'll find it contains mailing instructions and the 5,000. She said she'd be laughing from her grave. She almost did. Well, there goes your troubles, Lucas boy. Every cent of it. Yeah, but where's it going? I'm sending it to the U.S. Marshal at Santa Fe. That money was stolen, Mark. I checked the serial numbers with Washington. Good riddance, I say. Well, John, I never thought I'd hear a banker say anything like that. Well, maybe. But I haven't slept right since the will was read. I don't think any of us have. I'm glad it's over. Amen to that. That Mrs. Carruthers and all she tried to do, I think there's one thing she didn't figure out. What's that, Mark? Well, when you've got a lot of friends, I mean, like what Paul has in Northport, well, there just isn't that much money in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Millie. I'll buy some coffee. See you later, John. Yeah. 